So I just left the dealer. I figured it's about time that I do some maintenance on this X Mark since I've had it. You guys know the deal. I traded it for the Walker B and I got it, had the bagging system on. I took the bagging system off of it because I'm not going to need it right away. I probably will only need it for fall. Um, I explained to you guys before that last year was my test year. I wanted to get away from bagging and I wanted to see how much I could do. And I made it through the whole year without bagging. So I really didn't need to bag anything. I think I bagged a few properties I used the Walker MT for, which if that really comes up and it's an issue, I'll just pull that out and use that. But um, I'm really not going to run that full bagging system on the... Um, on the Oxmark Laser Z or the Skag V Ride 2, uh, unless I need it. So, anyway, I haven't done any maintenance on this thing, and um, the guy I got it from definitely had great maintenance records um, and definitely kept up on the machine. But I like to do my own and I like to be sure of what I have and what I'm working with. So, before the season starts, I am going to uh, change the oil, change the filter, change the fuel filter, change the spark plugs, and pull the blades off there and sharpen those blades. I'm not really sure the condition of the blades. I just grabbed onto them real quick and moved them when I made the deal with the guy. I wanted to make sure there's no play in the spindles or anything. So I haven't really taken a real good look up under this deck. So today is the day for that. And uh, now that I went to the dealer and got the stuff that I needed to get to make this happen, um, we're going to get back to the house and... We're gonna do it. So let's go do some X Mark Lasers, the X Series maintenance. I've been flying from town to town, from London to Taiwan. I've been all around the globe trying to protect your soul. So, for those of you that don't know, this is the X Mark Laser Z X Series. Uh, that I traded for the Walker B. And I really haven't done anything to it other than install the power chute, as I've showed you guys the other day um, in the video I made with that. This one's pretty neat. Uh, so the toggle, it's a foot control switch. So you press it one way, it goes down, and you press it the other way, and it goes up. Nice and simple. It's going to be a great feature to have on this deck. Um, this thing does have the Kohler 25 horse EFI, same as my brand new Skag V-Ride 2. Uh, the fuel filter does look pretty new, but it doesn't matter, we're gonna change it anyway. The oil filter also looks pretty new, gonna change it anyway, and we're gonna dump this oil. Um, the spark plugs, they may not be too bad either. Uh, this thing runs phenomenal. It does have the um, red equipped, red technology. For those of you who don't know what that is, um, it is all the way down is low RPM, mid-range RPM, high RPM, and that's how you control it. So um, that's the deal with that. But like I said, I don't really know what the deal is as far as when the last time the stuff was changed, even though it does look pretty new. But we're going to get this changed out today anyway. So I am going to uh, start this thing up, let it run for a while, even though it's in a nice warm heated garage. I'm going to let that oil get nice and hot so it drains out completely. And uh, I could just use my Mighty Vac and suck it out of there, but I'm not going to do that. I want to drain it out, uh, get everything from the lower end drained right down, right out. So I'm going to start this up. I'm going to let it run, let it get warmed up. In the meantime... Watch some quick little clips from the other videos I put together from this X Mark.
Okay, so changing oil on this thing, pretty darn simple. The oil filter is right there. And to change the oil, you just grab this hose right here and pull it out and bam. What I'm gonna do, and it, just put it just like that. And then it'll drain right out of there. Should come out real nice like. So it'll make it super simple. So there's a hole right below where the oil filter is. So it'll drain right out the bottom there. I could just slide the pan further underneath there and it'll drain out. This one will be super simple, nice and clean, easy. Shouldn't make a mess on anything. The fuel filter is right there. It does look brand new. I did already pull one of the spark plugs. See if I can, how easy I can make this for you guys to see. But one of them is right there. And the other one is down there. Kind of a pain in the butt to see down there, but it's really not too bad to get to. So I'm gonna pull those out. I'm gonna look at them because to be honest with you, the oil is my main thing. That's the main thing I wanna get changed here. Um, so I'm gonna dump the oil, change the filter. This fuel filter, I really think I'm just gonna leave it for now. It, I mean, there's not even dirt on it. It looks brand new. So I'm gonna pull the plugs off. The plugs are good as well. I'm not gonna change the plugs or the fuel filter and I'm gonna save them because eventually it will need it. So I might as well just save them and not waste them right now. Uh, this thing is running phenomenal, that's for sure. So I'm gonna dump the oil. I'll check those, we'll go from there. Okay, so the oil that came out of it was pretty black. Um, it looked good. Otherwise, no metal shavings in it, no uh, no water in it, which is usually like a milky color. Um, you know, on a regular car engine, I'd worry it's usually a head gasket issue if it's a milky, like, milkshake color, a lot of white in it. But um, I've noticed over the years, these mowers, nine times out of ten, if you have just a little bit of, like, white milky stuff in it, it's usually from washing the mowers water gets inside there sometimes it gets through these caps um you never know um i've seen it many many times with my mowers over the years and i just if i notice it in there i'll flush it out put fresh oil in the next time you go to change it or check it it's gone you know that's like i said it's usually pretty simple nothing big but i did uh I did decide to not change that fuel filter. I pulled um, both of the plugs out. I just did this one at first because um, that one back there is more of a pain in the butt to get to. Um, but I just pulled this one at first. The plug looks almost brand new. I think they've probably just recently been changed. It doesn't even look like this motor's really been run on those plugs. But I know sometimes with these smaller engines, one side could be doing good and the other side not so much. Been down that road many times. So I pulled that one anyway that one looked the same. So I'm gonna leave the plugs, leave the fuel filter for now. Um, I did not check this air filter. I better pull that out and check that as well. Spencer Lilly from Bow Enterprises hooked me up with a great link that I knew nothing about before. And you would think that I would know with all the maintenance and stuff that I do and how much I deal with Napa. But any filter you can cross-reference to a Napa filter, they actually have a separate website for it. It's not even Napa's regular website you go for parts. It's a Napa cross-reference site. Um, and I can't even think of the name of it or else I'd give you guys the link, but you just type in Napa cross-reference filter and it'll bring you right up to it. You can literally cross-reference anything. He found fuel filters, hydraulic filters, stuff like that on there for his Bobcats that he couldn't even get from the dealer. And at a fraction of the cost. And I know these double filter elements for all my mowers I've had in the past, the Skags, the Walkers, the X Marks, the Toros, these things can be $35, $40 and up per filter. And you can get that whole element for like 20 bucks. Um, so I could better check that, change that if need be. But I definitely need to get to these blades now and get a good look at those. Get them over here on the RBG 712 if need be. Get those sharpened and balanced to my specs. Not whatever somebody else did. Those are two completely different things. I love this jack. I've had this thing for a few years now, and I learned about this through um, Johnny from Blades of Grass. Best darn thing I ever bought. They make another version now. They have two arms that come up, 
some places that would be nice and other places I can see it really getting in the way so for now I'll stick to this and it's really nice you can throw it right inside your trailer and in the spring when you're mowing a lot of heavy wet thick grass it takes two seconds to put this up under the deck flip it up scrape out the grass that's all building up in there drop it back down and away you go way better easier and faster than one of them old girls you know normally I would be fine but for the last two days I've been doing a lot of leg extensions and calf extensions weighted heavily weighted because I love doing legs although it doesn't look like it if you've ever seen me because I just have horrible genetics in my legs and even though I work legs like three days a week yeah it doesn't matter I still look like I have chicken legs but anyway my legs are killing me and just getting up and down man if something was chasing me right now I'd be screwed let's look at this so underneath here doesn't look the best I don't think the guy really ever scraped this very much but the good thing is there's no pitting there's no rotting there's no really anything but uh, these blades actually look pretty sharp and they feel pretty sharp my issue is I can't tell much from under here but they do not look like they're even close to a 30 degree angle and that's a problem so we need to get these off here make sure these blades are straight and not bent while we have still have time to order new ones get them sharpened balanced and go from there we'll get back to the blade situation in a second but see this I had to use one of my heavy duty pairs of oil filter wrenches they're kind of like channel locks but they're oil filter wrenches to get this thing off I've said this a hundred times guys it don't matter if it's a mower a car a four-wheeler tractor there's no need to put oil filters on that tight just completely unnecessary okay I figured I'd lay some paper towels out here so hopefully you guys can get a better view of these I don't know how much you can tell but for one thing the blade doesn't go straight okay the cutting edge doesn't go straight it goes that way which tells me one thing right off the bat they sharpen these with a handheld angle grinder okay there's chunks missing out of those or out of this one here the other thing is there's you can't you probably can't see that on camera but there's like a flat line that goes along the edge then there's a different angled flat line that goes up here and there's different intervals in between all of it where it's lower higher lower higher again that tells me they were sharpened with an angle grinder and not an actual blade sharpener okay this one here is a sharp edge right up to the point and then out there it kind of curves outward again didn't do it correctly this one here the blade width is not very wide and then it gets wider as it goes down this one here it's pretty wide up there but super thin right there and it almost it's almost blunt it's not back at a 30 degree angle this one even worse so there's still a lot of life left in these blades um so i am going to repair them it's going to take a bunch of work and i'm going to be on the uh, rbg 712 for a little while not nearly as long as i would be on a regular bench grinder that takes even longer but this rbg 712 it'll uh it'll clean these up pretty good and get them back into shape relatively easy it's just going to take a little bit of work but i am going to order another set these will be just fine for quite a while they may even last me the whole season once i get them back into shape but i'm going to order another set anyway just so i have a backup like i do with all my machines so let's get these things on the uh the old rbg see if we can't clean them up get them back to a 30 degree angle so for those of you i haven't shown it to before this here is the rbg 712 manufactured by wall enterprises inc okay this wheel i've been using this wheel for a year and a half and this thing has uh i can't tell you usually in the spring for the first three four months of spring or first three four months of the season i usually sharpen my blades every three days on all my mowers 
okay and this thing still has i'll probably get another half season out of this thing uh before i actually burn it up you can use either side or if you just more commonly use one side more than the other you could take it out and flip it over and burn up the other side i also have four spare wheels that i got with it and i haven't even touched them this is still the first original one plus i do a lot of sharpening on the side for other people they drop their blades off here i sharpen them and they pick them up okay so this thing has really lasted now it's not cheap i want to say that between what i paid for it i did the deal at gie uh they had a booth there i think um i bought the unit with the collector um because this comes separate you have to buy that separate so i bought the unit with the collector and it came with the wheel in it plus one spare wheel and i want to say it was just under 600 bucks now i cringed for years i was not going to buy it i wasn't going to spend that kind of money I have not regretted it for one second since I bought it. I should have done it years ago. If you guys can afford to do it, you're kidding yourself not to. Spend the money. It's worth every single penny. I love this thing. So anyway, let's get to sharpening these blades. Now, before we go any further, there's been a number of you that have really been on me about safety and uh, pointing out every single thing that I do in my shop or even in my regular videos that is not what you would consider safe. So... For you guys, safety first. We're gonna sharpen some blades. Sparks are gonna be flying. Better be safe. Okay, so I'm not gonna do a before and after. I'm not gonna splice that in here, so to speak. So if you wanna look, <laughs> rewind a little bit and look back, but you can see a huge difference. You see how wide that cutting edge is? So what I mean by wide is from the back of the blade to the tip of the blade, the length there, that's pretty wide now. That's because it is now at a 30 degree angle. Um, all sides of every one is at a perfect 30 degree angle these will cut much better much cleaner and will last longer before they need resharpened when you sharpen blades and you don't have them at the right angle they will dull out much faster and they will more than often um, rip the grass versus cutting it and when that happens you leave the grass susceptible to disease and you'll start seeing white tips in all the grass so after you mow a lawn it'll look like there's snow on it so that concludes the maintenance that I have for this machine. I am super excited about using this thing, guys. I know I've said it so many times, but I'm stoked to use this thing this year. I cannot wait, and this thing is good to go. There's nothing else that needs to be done on it. The hydros are all good, everything's good there. The tires are good. The blades are now sharpened and balanced to my specs. Um, and at that 30 degree, I know some people disagree and they, they wanted this or that a little different back and forth. I've never read a manual that says different than 30 degree. 
I've been doing 30 degree forever. Years ago when I worked for other companies, we always did 30 degree. Um, that's just the angle we sharpen the blade, so we always have it. And there's, uh, I've never found anything better. So this works for me. If you do it different, you know, that's for you, but this is what works for me. This is what I sharpen all of mine to, and I've never had an issue. Um, but the oil's changed. Uh, the plugs are great. The fuel filter's great. Hydros are great on it. There's, uh, there's nothing that it needs. I love the suspension on this seat. The extra shock absorber suspensions that are in all four corners of it, the padding that is on this seat, and let's not forget the power shoe. I'm excited. Can you tell? Uh, that's it. That's it for this one. Uh, kind of a weird little video, but whatever. It's maintenance and it's broken up and it's different from another power shoe video. Which there's another one of those coming. Thumbs up, thumbs down, guys. Join in the conversation below. Let me know what you what you guys sharpen your blades to if you do it different than that 30 degree. Or if you do the 30 degree and you did it differently before, put down in the comments before. Let people see what the difference is because I don't honestly believe there's ever been anyone that's gone from something other, like more of a blunt edge to it, and then switched to a 30 degree and got them right and weren't happy with the results or didn't like what the difference was. So put in the comments below what your experience with it is and uh, make sure you share this video, share it everywhere and anywhere, and I will catch you guys in the next one.